As President Trump and Republican lawmakers continue to deny any wrongdoing in regard to the president's dealings with Ukraine, many are pointing to allegations involving Vice President Joe Biden. While there's certainly no doubt that the vice president's son was sitting on the board of Ukrainian energy company, seeming to raise questions about whether he was profiting off his father's title, the president's defenders are accusing the Bidens of something far more criminal. One reporter says the real story isn't what Rudy Giuliani and others are making it out to be. Last month, The Intercept's Jim Risen, he published a story titled, I wrote about the Bidens in Ukraine years ago, then the right-wing spin machine turned the story upside down. Jim joins us now to explain and to dig into the current allegations against President Trump and Democratic presidential hopeful Joe Biden. Jim, thank you so much for Great joining us. Great to see you, Jim. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Sure, thanks. So, Jim, we, we've tracked this story pretty closely here. Uh, I think you're, you're, I think you originally wrote the story about Hunter Biden uh, sitting on the board of Burisma receiving $50,000 a month. What is being misconstrued uh, by, by critics of Joe Biden and supporters of the president here? Well, I wrote this yeah. story uh, back in 2015. It was before you know anybody sure. really had heard about it, and, and it's it's kind of funny because my story was like inside the New York Times. It wasn't on page one, yeah. and I don't think anybody noticed it you know, <laughs> <laughs> until like four years later. It's yeah. like a, it's like this little time bomb that suddenly yeah. exploded. It's funny. Uh, and the story to me was interesting because it was kind of this classic Washington story of uh, a family member. You know, trying to exploit their family name, yeah. which, and which is clearly what Hunter Biden was doing. He was—he right. uh, had a lot of different uh, problems in his life. I mean, sure. he's kind of the black sheep of yeah, the family, you know. And as I have an older brother, so I know what it's like to, you know, try to live up to your older brother. And mm -hmm. I think that's what has haunted him his whole life. You know, his older brother mm. was the hero of right. the family, and yeah. So, you know, you can understand it a little bit. Um, and so he took advantage of this uh, offer to join this board. Of, you know, why you join the board of a Ukrainian natural <laughs> gas company? <laughs> I don't well, know. And Jim, when but your dad is vice president, right, John right. Kerry's stepson, who was in business with him, right. was so troubled by this that right. he stopped doing yeah, business yeah, with him yeah, and told right. the State Department right. about it. Yeah, yeah. I, in my original right. story, I knew about his uh, Hunter's relationship with, uh, I think it's Chris Hines. Yeah, Christopher right? Hines. <clears throat> and, um, but because Chris Hines didn't go onto the Burisma board, I right. left him out of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and in any event, so he's, he joins the board in 2014 of this energy company that's run uh, by this uh, guy who was close to the old pro-Russian Ukrainian mm -hmm. government. Um, and then, you know, Joe Biden starts becoming the, the lead on messenger policy. for the Obama administration on Ukraine policy. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes to um, uh, uh, Ukraine in December 2015 uh, to talk to the Ukrainian leaders about the fact that they have to crack down on corruption. And so this point of my story was this classic Washington story where, you know, a, uh, a leading American political figure goes and sends this message, uh, which is undercut by his son's involvement yeah. right. with this right. uh, corrupt company, which was under investigation mm -hmm. by the British. But that is a, that's a that's a straightforward you know story that I thought at the time and I still think is politically awkward for Biden mm -hmm. and is shows that the Obama administration and Biden were somewhat hypocritical on Ukraine and anti-corruption. I mean, the United States is is hypocritical about corruption all over the world. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's a very different story than what Rudy Giuliani and the uh, and Trump and these other people have mm. been pushing more recently, which is they claim that Biden went there to tell the Ukrainians, fire this prosecutor because he's investigating my son. Yeah. Uh, and I want to protect my son, and we will withhold uh, aid to the Ukraine unless you do that. Mm. That's not what happened. What happened was... Biden was sent there as part of this Obama administration initiative that was also part of a larger Western initiative to get Ukraine to crack down on corruption. And he was doing that in spite of the appearances that caused problems for him by, right. uh, by his son. I mean, basically what I see happening here is on the right, 
Giuliani and Trump go way out beyond right. where the facts are. Right. Right. But on the other hand, you have Democrats pretending like this was all kosher and fine right. and that there's right. no problem here, right. when in fact that type of ordinary political corruption is exactly what has consistently undermined trust in our right. political institutions right. that you right. would look at this young man who has no experience in Ukrainian oil and gas sitting on the board earning more than the Exxon Mobil board members earn mm -hmm. per month and say this is all totally fine right. is also in itself problematic so you have both sides sort of completely spinning this yeah, I mean, I, I, in a ridiculous way. I always thought that I mean, if the Republicans wanted to make, they could have just taken the actual There's facts. There's enough there. And, it's and problematic the enough. I yeah. do, I right. Do so that's that, why yeah. it's stupid to go the way they've gone. I do that. wonder, though, because, I mean, I've seen the reports that his business partner is meeting with Biden in the executive office, you know, the old executive office building. That it seems very difficult to think that Joe Biden did not know about these business entanglements by the investigation oh, on this company when he oh, acted. Yeah, of in this course he, he knew about it. Right. I think there's no. Yeah, question. I mean nobody's saying he did it for the express purpose, or maybe Trump and Giuliani are saying that. Yeah, that I is mean, very that's, foolish. Are, that's not true. They are saying that. Okay, well that's, that's not true. <laughs> the yeah. difference right. is that, as I said, yeah. the, and as uh, yeah. Crystal said, the case, the facts are bad enough for Biden. Mm -hmm. I mean. You could have just said, you know, Biden uh, should have recused himself. Or his Biden, son was cashing right. in on his name, and yeah. it wasn't okay. Uh, but that's not the same as mm -hmm. saying, you know, Biden criminally went to uh, the Ukraine sure. to use his position to protect his son. That's just not what but happened. But part of the issue, right, is the vice president says, I didn't even know about it. I never discussed my son's business dealings. That's There's no way that's true. And no, the I mean, body of evidence says, shows that it's think, not true. I think, yeah. to be fair yeah. to him, he says he doesn't discuss the business right. relationship with his son. That doesn't right. mean he doesn't know about it. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Oh, okay. Well, right. and the other issue here is that this isn't the first sort of sketchy situation for Hunter to be in in terms of business dealings or deals yeah. with China. Right. Him sit him involved with a credit card processor when if in Delaware right. when Biden is a senator. So there's there's a pattern I mean, here he as a, well. I mean, you know, as I said, he's the black sheep of the family. He yeah. is the Billy Carter of the Biden family. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the I'm sorry to say, you know, he clearly, I mean, as a younger brother of a, when my, when I was young, my mother said, you got to be more like your brother, yeah, you know, right. and so I know what that's like. So yeah. Jim, I know you have a new story about uh, Jay Sekulow, why don't you give a quick chance to preview that before we go? Yeah. Yeah, I wrote it. Yeah. I was, uh, I was sitting in a green room of another uh, mm -hmm. news organization and Jay Sekulow was there and he starts talking on the cell phone the other day about how... Uh, you know, he's now representing Trump again. He's mm -hmm. come back. And he's, he started talking on the cell phone right in front of me mm -hmm. about how we've got to uh, get on top of this story and, you know, we've got to catch up. And, that, and then he starts talking about somebody who is uh, out there stirring things up and not being helpful, which I think was probably Giuliani. So <laughs> I just seems, thought it was pretty funny. Seems like funny. a fair guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, the things we ever hear in Reminder, green don't terms. ever talk in front of reporters. <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. really yeah. anywhere in yeah. D.C. Or anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly not on the Acela either. Well, especially yeah. after, you know, a couple years ago when uh, Trump's lawyers were sitting in a restaurant. That's in right. New York yeah. Times. And got Amazing. over by Ken Vogel. Right. Amazing. It is a small town. Jim, right. thank, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Great Appreciate to have it. you. Thanks a lot. Next on Rising, turning from one presidential frontrunner to another, Elizabeth Warren. She gets a lot of credit for her domestic policy plans, but on foreign policy, her record is somewhat less robust. Journalist Zed Jelani explains why. That's next.